Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Dennis Haley and I founded Academy Leadership in 2000 to provide leadership development programs for organizations based on the methods used at the Naval Academy in West Point. We combine these strategies with today's successful corporate philosophies to create our trademark Lead to Succeed programs, which to date more than 25,000 business managers have attended at least one of our programs. In 2005, we developed the Gettysburg Leadership Experience where business leaders walk the battlefield of this straight, great struggle to learn battle-tested leadership lessons that will help them meet their current challenges. This has proven to be a very powerful team building and leadership development program for these business leaders. But how do young collegiate leaders or team captains learn to lead his or her peers? And how does the coach or athletic department provide opportunities to develop these effective leadership skills? Studying leadership in a crucible of ground combat on one of the nation's most iconic battlefields is not a study in military strategy, but a study in leadership, teamwork, military strategy, uh, uh, communications, success and failure. Walking the ground teaches things one cannot learn in the conference room because the experience like leadership is emotional as well as intellectual. Academy leadership facilitators skillfully bring the leadership lessons learned back to the student leaders uh, personal experience and helps them discover how they can apply these challenges they face with the new leadership uh, experiences. Several years ago, the Naval Academy started to take their team leaders, team captains, and their midshipmen leaders to Gettysburg. And this has been a very successful program. And now West Point takes their team leaders and cadet leaders to Gettysburg. This past summer, Academy Leadership developed the leadership program for collegiate leaders and brought a group of collegiate team captains and leaders to Gettysburg to experience this battle-tested leadership program. I would like to introduce General Caslin, who was instrumental in developing and delivering this successful program. He will also be our mod uh, moderator today and will introduce our other uh, panelists. Uh, Robert Caslin is a retired United States Army Lieutenant General who served in the Army for 43 years. His military career cul culminated as in 2018 as the 59th superintendent of the United States Military Academy at West Point. He served as, he also served as the 29th president of the University of South Carolina. Under his direction as superintendent, the academy was recognized as the number one pu public college in the nation by Forbes magazine and News and, US News and World's Report. He also refined West Point's leadership program with a focus on professional ethics as an essential part of leadership and character development. As the University of South Carolina president, General Caslin successfully led the university through its most challenging period, the 2021 pandemic. Keeping the university's strategic plan functional during the pandemic, the university remained open, profited an additional $50 million, opened a national online program, and increased its enrollment applications by 21%. Working with the West Point Director of Athletics, General Caslin revamped the athletic program, made it self-sustaining and fielded 25 competitive intercollegiate teams. He created a partnership with the NCAA and the Department of Defense to conduct research into preventing and treating uh, concussions and traumatic brain injury, which led to significant improvements in prevention and care. And fulfilling a pledge he made soon after becoming superintendent he led a sweeping reversal of Army's football program and developed a culture of excellence through winning with character. General Caslin also served on the NCAA Division I Board of Di Directors and Board of Governors. General Caslin co-authored the book, The Character Edge, Winning and Leading with Integrity, and was instrumental in the development of the Battle Tested Leadership Lessons Program. General Caslin. Well, thank you very much, Dennis. And first, just let me pass on my welcome to all those participants that are with us uh, this afternoon. It's great to have you. Uh, before I introduce the panel, I'd like to invite our attendees uh, to submit any questions that you may have using the question and answer button on the bottom of the uh, screen. I'll moder moderate and pull the questions out and pass them to the panel and to Dennis as well. And speaking of the panel, it's really my pleasure to introduce them to you. And let me first introduce Jen Heppel, the commissioner of the Patriot League. Jen Heppel was appointed as the Patriot League's fifth commissioner in June of 2015. And since being appointed, 
Jen has prioritized the league's focus on athlete experience through engagement and student athlete health and welfare initiatives. She also has advanced the league's visibility through the renegotiation of its media marketing rights agreements. Jennifer is a leader in national governance, representing the Patriot League with the NCAA and Collegiate Commissioners Association structures. And she currently serves on the NCAA Committee on Academics. She's on the Division I Council and uh, the Division I Legislative Committee. Our athletic director is from West Point, Mike Buddy. He is in his third year as the director of athletics at West Point. And prior to his time at West Point, he served as director of athletics at Furman University for four years, where they had achieved great success. In his time at West Point, 30 athletic programs continued to achieve success both on and off the fields of friendly strife. From the continued success of the football program to unprecedented fundraising success of the $95 million Mikey Stadium Preservation Project, he continues to support cadet athlete experiences. He began his career in athletic administration at Wake Forest University, which was following a 13-year career as a professional baseball player, which included winning the 1998 World Series Championship as a New York Yankee, as well as spending three seasons with the Milwaukee Brewers. Mickey Wendler is an award-winning NCAA head swimming and diving coach of men and women with over 400 wins. With a 30-year track record of proven success, his athletes have qualified for the NCAAs in every event, and they consistently are among the top national achievers. Coach Wendler served as head women's and men's swimming and diving coach at the United States Military Academy at West Point from 2006 to 2019, and he is currently the head women's and men's swimming and diving coach at Colorado Mesa University in Grand Junction, Colorado. Coach Wender also served as the head coach of the American Samoa Olympic team in Beijing in 2008. Aline Vermeulen joined the Bucknell Athletics Department in July 2019 as a student athlete development assistant for the Student Athlete Enrichment Program. In this capacity, she provides intentional programs to support and enrich the Bucknell Scholar Athlete. She is a former student athlete herself. She was captain of the Boston University women's rowing team. She's a native of Belgium and earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in both psychology and international relations in 2015. She then received her master's degree in higher education and higher education administration from BU in 2017. Aline helped academy leadership organize our first Gettysburg Battle Test of Leadership Experience uh, and was very active as a participant, along with our commissioner, Jen Heppel. Uh, we would now like to show a short video about the leadership program that was, that was put together as, as of a program that we had last summer. So let's go ahead with the video, please. Academy leadership is dedicated to building leaders and to developing leaders. And when you have team captains that are peer leaders and are challenged with not only excelling themselves but excelling the entire team, there's no better way to be able to work with them and to develop them and to provide for their development than bringing them out here to Gettysburg. To really look at the battlefield and look at some of the lessons that were learned on the battlefield and see how they were applied to them as peer leaders. Well, the battlefield itself is powerful. And some of the lessons are incredibly insightful. So what happens is you could see lessons of leadership. Now that we are 150 years beyond what actually took place, we can understand the consequences. So when leaders have made a decision and have taken action, now you can see and understand what the consequence is. But what happens is that the leadership that was implemented on the battlefield now has a lesson and a lesson to be learned. That lesson is universal. Leadership is universal. The principles of motivating and inspiring young men and women, that those principles are universal. So you can take lessons that are learned here and see how they are now applied into peer leadership when these team captains have the responsibility to lead their teams and inspire the young men and women on their teams to achieve levels they hadn't previously ever thought were possible. 
I've always felt and always believed that pure leadership is the most difficult leadership. Normally, if you're in the Army, for example, and you have a hierarchy of leadership where you have someone in charge and you got subordinates, they normally, when you speak as a senior, the subordinates sit and listen, so leadership becomes very easy at that point. Peer leadership, they don't have to listen, you know? So how do you become influential as a peer leader so that you can inspire and motivate peers to accomplish goals and objectives, which really is what leadership's all about? What is your leadership philosophy? What is your personal leadership philosophy? I don't know who motivated you to come. I don't know why you came, but the fact that you're here says a lot about you as a, not only as an athlete, not only as a student athlete, but as a leader as an athlete. So that you can study leadership from other people and see how leadership was applied, but more important, how does that leadership lesson apply to us today? And that's why we're here at Gettysburg, because Gettysburg is not just to talk about military history. Gettysburg is to talk about leadership. And the reason I love Gettysburg so much is that most of the fighting at, at Gettysburg was from small unit leaders, young people that were in charge of smaller groups. And they're the ones that really made a key difference. So there's leadership lessons, and those type of lessons will also be applicable to what you're gonna be doing as a leader in your sport. It's been super cool so far to get to go through like, you know, the battle scene and see uh, like a super influential time in American history. So I, I think it's uh, it's been a really cool experience to get to view it from a different perspective. I like the way this is structured in the sense that like we would get to view like a monument or like an area on the battlefield and then Chris would just like explain it and get to talk about it a little bit and then it, we would have like leadership skills worked into that rather than like doing the whole tour and then at the end talking about leadership. I thought that was really cool to break it down. And this is George Meade and this is in my view, the best general they've ever had and well suited to manage a defensive battle. He didn't want the job, nobody wanted it by then, but Lincoln didn't ask him, just told him, you'll take over. And in a soldierly fashion of doing his duty, he stepped up from 10,000 men to 90,000. And three days later, the biggest battle of the war is gonna begin at Gettysburg. It's gonna be Notable because it's up north. Most battles are in the south. And it's going to be so notable because it is one battle above all others, in my view, that could have changed the course of our country. If you wonder how Union soldiers felt about it, one of them looked back on our battle. He said to fail at Gettysburg would have been the death of the USA. And so if there was ever a battle where Union soldiers are going to cling to their ground, it's going to be here at Gettysburg. And if there was ever a battle where Southerners are going to take the greatest risks, it's here at Gettysburg. They want the war over, and they'll pay any price to either preserve the United States or win independence and take off that stinking, dirty, gray uniform and go home. When I was a superintendent of the United States Military Academy at West Point, we had heard that Navy was doing this, and we realized this is a great program. So we at West Point had decided to bring our team captains here and it was so successful with our team captains that we brought not only our team captains, we brought all of the cadet leaders who are in leadership positions. The coaches from the athletic side and the team captains from the athletic side can't say enough about their experience out here. Pulling them away from the military academy and their duties and responsibilities for a couple days is worth every minute for being out here. Understanding leadership in a very open, conducive setting, setting the conditions for team building and understand what's expected. And then, like I said, the application of those, of those uh, leadership lessons to what they're gonna be doing as leaders themselves. So this is your performance on any given day over time. Every once in a while, your performance increases and you perform to the upper level of your potential over here. And sometimes you perform to the less of your potential. So complacency to me, correct me if I'm wrong, is where average occurs. Because average, you just go out there and do it. It doesn't take a lot of energy, it doesn't take a lot of effort. How do I, as a team captain, get my team, my teammates, to perform to their up level their potential in everything they do? How do I get them out of complacency to get there? You set the standard. You personally set the standard because you're out there doing it. Your subordinates say, if he's doing it, there's no excuse. I can, if he's doing it, I'm, I gotta do it. And when soldiers, subordinates, teammates see you as the leader sharing hardships, it takes away every single excuse. 
So I think a lot can be taken away from the uh, civil war leaders that, that we've studied here. Things like shared hardships uh, has been something that really stood out to me and what I'd like to take back to my team. Having to deal with difficult conditions. These guys were dehydrated, some of them coming from walking 25 miles in a day. So it really puts things into perspective and how these hardships can better yourself and, and your teammates. What stood out to me in the culture was Buford's note to Reynolds saying, I need to slow him down, send infantry now. Usually the boss says, send infantry, but Buford's the subordinate. And as a subordinate, he says to the boss, send the infantry. Who's the one giving the orders? Normally the boss gives the orders, but in this case, Buford's giving the order. But it's not really an order. There has to be a relationship between the two of them where they have the freedom to be able to speak like this with each other. And they don't find it offensive. If they have that type of relationship, that relationship grew out of a culture. And that relation grew out of a culture that allowed that relationship to be mature, that relationship to be candid, that there can be open, candid conversation. You don't have to worry about offending somebody because people are listening and trusting what you're saying. So the question I wanna ask all of you is, as the team captain, as the team leader, how do you create that culture? How do you create that climate? How do you create that trust between you and your teammates and between you and your coach? I think uh, two biggest things would be like using communication to make sure everyone's on the same page and also setting uh, goals for the team, which give outlines for how people should act uh, moving forward and kind of sets the guidelines for how we need to act to achieve our goals. So making sure everything's really clear through communication and then staying within those parameters yep. to achieve our goals. Then we go down to Hancock's order to Colonel William Colville. Six to one, I think, were the odds, if I remember right. But they went ahead and attacked anyway, knowing that when you go in that direction, you're gonna have 80% casualties, and they do. So what makes a man or a woman attack knowing that that attack will most likely lead to their death. They all understood what the why was. They all understood what the why was tactically, and they all understood what the why was big picture. And what happens when you have a why? You do not negotiate the price, even to the point it costs your life. So how does that apply to you all? If you understand your why and you have complete buy-in of the why, of the purpose, then, then you will have a team that will commit themselves to success. One of the big ones that we talked about today was sacrifice. And um, even though like, I won't ever be sacrificing my life for my uh, teammates, I don't think, I hope not. Um, but uh, I think it's super cool to like really instill that like, in uh, rising leaders and captains in the sense that like, you know, we are all equals. And even though like some of us are placed in leadership positions, um, it's really about like, you know, self-sacrificing for the team and looking out for the entire team as a whole rather than for yourself. So what's so special about this one meeting that Meade has? 5,000 men are dead and another 15,000 or so are injured or missing. It's ugly. It is one heck of a fight. And you're hanging on by your fingernails and then they have the war council meeting. So what does Meade do? He brings in all his corps commanders. What's so special about doing that? He decides to take a collaborative approach to gaining a decision. It gives every single person the opportunity to speak. He looks them in the eye and you have the opportunity. He has the opportunity to really hear from them. There's gonna be times, you know, if it's gonna be the third quarter, it's gonna to be toward the end of the game. And you're gonna, your teammates are gonna be hurt. And you, on the sideline or whatever, go down there and look them in the eye and say, how you doing? You not only get an appreciation for what, they're, what they are really capable of, but at the same time, you motivate them because you have demonstrated the fact that you care enough to be there. One of the values and one of the core 
principles of the Patriot League is to enhance the personal development of student athletes and to prepare student athletes to become leaders. So having the opportunity to do direct leadership programming like the Gettysburg Leadership Academy just perfectly aligns with the core values of the Patriot League and our efforts to create leaders through um, the student athlete experience. There is no better job, in my opinion, than investing in the future of our future leaders. Definitely something that uh, captains and leaders should get to experience. Oh no, okay, okay. <laughs> I think I was uh, muted that entire time. All right, can you all hear me now, Kara? Are we good to go? Yes, we can hear you, sir. All right, got it, good. All right, um, I was talking for about a minute there, so I apologize. Let me just say thanks for the video and putting that video together, Academy Leadership, you did a great job. I uh, also want to invite each and every one of you, if you have a question, if you want to talk to any of the panelists individually, collectively, uh, please go to the bottom of the screen where it says Q&A, click on that, and then write your question down. As a moderator, I'll pull those out and, uh, and, and, and pass them across the panel. In the meantime, as you're thinking about a question you may have, I'm going to have some questions to the panelists themselves so that you can hear from the panel, uh, especially those who are not part of the video itself. But one who was part of the video, and I'd like to start with her, the commissioner of the Patriot League, Jen Heppel. So Jen is an NCAA athletic conference commissioner. And I know you are totally committed to not only athletic excellence, but also to academic and leadership excellence. What are your observations of this program? And, and what are some of your, having been personally involved in that particular one that we did last summer, what are some of the observations that you had that you would like to share with uh, those listening? Um, well, thank you again for, for having me and watching the video certainly brought back some great memories from, um, from the experience last summer. You know, from a conference office perspective, I think we're always focused on student athlete leadership experiences, um, but we also understand that so much of this type of programming is most effectively developed and managed um, at the institutional level. It was really beneficial about the Gettysburg experience was um, from the conference office perspective, the opportunity for conference programming that was really unique from some of the uh, on-campus events that uh, many of our institutions had engaged in. Um, you know, it, it kind of, an, and General Caslin certainly touched on this in the video, um, but sort of open and honest observation. As a civilian, I was a little, I don't want to say skeptical, but you know, I've perceived military leadership and its chain of command structure to be very different than um, perhaps um, what I'm used to working in higher ed and our shared governance concepts. Um, but you know, so I was a little concerned some of the leadership lessons wouldn't be as transferable for our non-service academy student athletes. Um, I was incorrect. Um, I thought one, uh, some of the most interesting and practical debates, discussions that occurred among the student athletes were exactly around the chain of command issue. You know, if one wants to challenge authority, so to speak, how should that be done um, in, you know, what is the most respectful and effective way to do that? When should it be done? Um, certainly, uh, General Kaslin addressed some of that in, in, the, in the video around the creation of culture. Um, so I, you know, I found it to, to be very transferable and practical um, from a civilian perspective as well. Yeah, if I could just react for a second, Jen. Um, you know, the whole focus of this program is not about hierarchical leadership, it's about peer leadership. It's about developing the student athlete 
in their leadership skills. And most of their leadership environment that they find themselves in is a peer leadership where there is no hierarchy of leadership. You know, it's, it's how do you become influential as a peer with your fellow teammates, your fellow peers? And that becomes the focus of how to develop leaders peer through peer leadership, more so than that hierarchical uh, leadership that we experience in the military academies and, and such. Um, I'd like to uh, jump over to our West Point athletic director, Mike Buddy. And Mike, you know, this program started before you got to West Point. Um, and when I was there with the program, that's before you got there as well. But now that you've had the opportunity to see student athletes go through the program and to see the impact that they have had on their teammates once they return, what are some of your observations about how the program has helped to develop um, some of those peer leaders? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's been a phenomenal, uh, impactful um, program that we do, not just for our, our peer leaders, but we encourage staff and, and certainly our new coaches who are civilian um, to, to attend as well. So, you know, I got here in 2019 after 15 years at, at civilian institutions. And so I see this through the eyes, not only as, as the, the current athletic director at an academy, but also uh, with some historic uh, references from, from the real world of, of college athletics. And what I really appreciate is the battlefield is really, it's a case study of individual and team dynamics and grit and resiliency and leadership. And so at its core, Gettysburg is really a study of, of people working together as a team in order to accomplish the uh, almost impossible task against a determined opponent, which by the way, is exactly what we ask our student athletes and coaches to try to do every time that they compete. And so I love that the, the battle itself is, is creatively used as a tool to explore leadership and teamwork dynamics at a really intimate level um, and, and, and explore the human dimension of competition in extreme environments. And so you think about decisions that were made and um, adjustments that have to be made under incredibly high pressure stakes and that's exactly what our coaches are trying to do in the last 30 seconds of a basketball game. And so there's, there's lessons that, that uh, are so appealing on so many levels. And it's really important to, to note that uh, there's no requirement, whether, whether you're a history buff that knows everything that happened at, at Gettysburg or whether you're a novice, you don't need to understand military tactics. You don't need to understand anything specific about Gettysburg because it's presented in a way that really allows for growth um, without any knowledge of the history and, and, and the staff and the, the leadership of the experience, uh, they understand that the understanding occurs on site through the events itself. And, you know, for years uh, at every stop in my career, we're always looking for ways to engage our, our student, our, our student athlete leaders. Um, we want to get off campus and kind of get away where we can focus on relationships and getting to know each other and, and peer to peer interactions. And so you mentioned this in the video, General Caslin we pair our, our student athlete um, captains of our teams with the leaders within the core because you know everywhere you've ever been, there's always this, hey, they're the athletes and we're the students. And so we use it as a great opportunity for them to have a shared experience. So our athletes, our, our cadets, coaches and staff are able to build these bonds through a shared experience as you're walking this, this battlefield. You know, the, the natural organic conversations that take place as you're walking on this historic a battlefield, you know, you socialize and you you learn more about each other as human beings. Um, and we've seen a huge increase just in our shared understanding at a really personal level that the, the, the leaders of the Corps of Cadets and the leaders of our, our athletic teams, um, it leads to a stronger community and a culture at the academy in itself. And, and I'll note, you know, we, we weren't able to do it during COVID and, and we can see the differences in our team captains who have been on the Gettysburg leadership experience and those who haven't, just the way that they interact with their peers. So uh, certainly impactful. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. So my next question goes to our coach, uh, Mickey Wonder. But before we do, I have one question that came up on the q and I'm going to pull that up now from Stacy Miller. Uh, Stacy asks, so what are some suggestions and ideas that you can share with us and how to, to develop and improve leadership skills of non-academy student athletes? I think Jennifer talked to that a little bit, and I would invite anybody in the panel who would like to say that, but I'll take a shot at it. Uh, Stacy. I would just say that the leadership experiences and the leadership lessons that are that we talk about on the Gettysburg battlefield are, as I said in the video, universal. 
That's a leadership skill that's universal. The key that we do is to take that leadership lesson and then we, or you take the event, the historical event, or that particular battle that, that occurred. Sometimes it's just a small battle between uh, just a small number of, of men on both sides. And then you extract out of that, what's the lesson to be learned? And the key to all of this is the next step. What's the lesson to be learned and how do you apply that lesson to me? How do you apply that lesson to my environment, to my, the conditions that I'm under? And that's the skills, that's the skill set that we as moderators on the battlefield, that's what we bring to the to the to this conversation. Is not just to talk about the historical event, but talk about the leadership lesson and how that lesson applies to us as pure leaders uh, within our within our within our sport. Uh, and that's what we bring there. So that I just wanted to pass that on. Okay, Mick, Mickey, let me uh, go to you if I could. You know, as a swim dive coach at West Point when you were there with us. Uh, your student athletes attended the program over a number of years. And how has that benefited the student athlete who attended? And what are your observations of how it not only impacted the student athlete, but the impact it had on, on your team as the team coach? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the coolest thing about the Gettysburg experience are the stories. And these are regular people doing extraordinary things in a very high stakes environment that our athletes can relate to on a, on a personal level. You can read all the leadership books in the world, but when you hear about regular people, young people going out in life or death situation, having to do very difficult things, I think what I heard from our athletes consistency, consistently was this person did this thing and this was the result which had a profound effect on, on their leadership style because they could relate to these people. Um, the other thing too, I think is, is that it's a retreat. It's an immersive experience. You have an opportunity to be with your peers in a way that's, that's unique where you're um, spending two days or 36 hours or, or however long it, it goes really thinking about leadership and the details and, and learning from other people in, in a unique way. And, and that always had a lasting effect on our, on our student athletes. And, and the third thought that comes to mind is, is the fact that General Bob Caslin is involved in this program. And having been around him for many years, first, when I first got to West Point as the Commandant of Cadets, he exposed us coaches to every possible experience that we could have from the slide for life to the indoor obstacle course test to give us experiences. This man is passionate about sharing military values that will translate to life skills, to leadership lessons. And, and he, he uses the military as a framework but he's about skills and about people developing. He took, he even took uh, myself and the athletic director and another coach to Baghdad, Iraq, so we could learn about leadership and about life and about what we were preparing young people for. So if you're looking for someone with perspective and, and just a, a breadth of knowledge about life, he was an athlete, he was the center on the football team, um, I think the fact that General Caslin's involved in this is, is a pretty amazing opportunity for young people. So those are the main things that come to mind. <laughs> You're very kind, Mickey. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, you made a point I thought that's worth highlighting. And, you know, that's the opportunity to, in, in the evening when you're back into the, in the hotel and we're talking about the lessons and, and really extracting out of there the lessons learned and how they apply. But, you know, there were a number, we had West Point, we had a number of the teams that brought their coaches as well. So not only did the student athletes have a great enriching dialogue among themselves, but there were also opportunities for the coach to sit down with his or her team captain so that they can talk about goals and objectives and what's reasonable, what's not, and what is it going to take, what's the sacrifice that's necessary. And the perspectives that were shared in those conversations, those very rich conversations in that environment were, 
we're, we're worth their weight in gold. So, you know, this is just not necessarily for student athletes. I, from my time on the Gettysburg experience, especially when I was at West Point, we brought coaches as well. It was up to the coach if they wanted to attend. Not all of them did, uh, but it was a win-win for them, for the athletes. And it was also a, a win-win with the student athlete and the coach to have those type of conversations. We also brought administrators, not only from uh, the athletic department, uh, other administrators uh, from the military academy too. And that just builds that cohesion across different pillars of leadership development. Because at West Point, you you have a leader development of the military program, the academic program, athletic program. And, and when you bring them all together and build those teams and build those bonds among the teams, it's just not the bond within that sport, it's also the bond within the university. So there's so much good that comes out of this particular program from what I experienced. And, Glad to bring that to you all. Okay, um, the last panelist that we have is um, Aline Vermeulen, and she brings a very unique perspective. And this is why I was glad that she agreed to be on our panel. So Aline, your job is singularly focused on student athlete development in Bucknell University for Bucknell student athletes. But having you, you also attended the Gettysburg Leadership Experience last summer. And from your experience, with a number of Bucknell team captains, some of which you saw during the video, what was their reaction to this experience and how has the program helped them now that their one semester passed when they were out there on the battlefield? How has that helped them with their team captain leadership responsibilities? And what other, what other observations did you make note of um, having personally attended the program? I would echo a lot of what the other panelists have said, and I'm so thankful to be here with all of you. Um, something that has really stood out to me is how much the participants still talk about their experiences and the lessons that they've learned over this past summer. Um, and some specific examples I can share is our team captains who have done sessions with their entire team based on what they learned at the Gettysburg Leadership Experience. So clearly a very long lasting impact that um, has left with our student athletes. And we've had some growing student leaders who have taken the position of a team captain. And um, in large part, that's thanks to how they were able to develop themselves as leaders through this experience. And it gave them a really unique opportunity of learning about history um, and situations and then have it be applied to them as leaders, uh, as student athletes. I thought um, that was one of my most unique observations is similar to what Jennifer shared, and especially now being um, from the US, I, I learned a lot about, about the Gettysburg um, history lessons and how it relates to student athlete leaders. And at Bucknell, we are also not Army or Navy in the Patriot League, but it was still applicable to them um, as the student leaders. So those are just some things that, that were shared. And I frequently get student athletes who were not able to join the experience asking when the next time is that we'll get to be able to go back um, and asking them about some of the specific lessons that they heard their fellow student athletes talk about. So it's been very impactful for all, for all of our student athlete leaders and hopefully we'll be able to go back in the, in the future to experience it again. You know, what was neat about uh, what we did last summer is we just didn't have Bucknell there. We had a couple of the, uh, we had athletes from a couple other college universities as well. And, and the exchange between them within the conference was really rich too. I, there was something that I thought that was really unique and glad to see that. Um, I got a couple questions that came up and thank you very much for the questions and to the general audience, please uh, shoot me some questions. We still got about uh, 20 minutes left and, and really the rest of the program is just to have a conversation uh, with whatever's on your mind and, and we'll we have some questions about it. Uh, Michaela, you, you asked a question as a former student athlete. I've been to many retreats and know that after the honeymoon phase, the enthusiasm dies down a little. What are some ways to continue this positive leadership mentality when the student athletes get back to their respective university. Let me open that up to the panel to see if anybody from the panel has any thoughts on that. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for your question, Michaela. Um, you're exactly right. Everybody loves being there on site. Um, and then the, the, the thrill usually dies down. It, we utilize this with our team captain. So uh, the entire team doesn't go. And what we encourage them to do is to take specific lessons learned and, and you'll have some classroom settings where you can take really good notes of people that are there. And so whether it's 
leadership under pressure or success through failure. So going back and realizing poor decisions that were made and, and what could have been done, um, putting the team first, overcoming obstacles, building trust. What we encourage them to do is our captains, um, you know, once every two weeks or so is to, to, to take on one of those topics that they learned uh, during the experience and sharing that with their teammates. So, so really just starting a discussion and it might be on one of those four hour bus rides, um, but, but it, it is a way to continue to talk about um, leadership lessons that were learned by a team captain and then sharing them with teammates uh, throughout the season. I'm yep. happy to share some more as well. Um, with our student athletes having gone through the experience this past summer, um, we were able to encourage them. And I was lucky that I also got to be a part of it. So I knew some of the lessons that they learned and the leadership philosophy that they got to work on. Um, so I've actually been able to temporarily check in with them and see what they have been doing with their leadership philosophy. I challenged all of them to connect with their coaches and share a little bit about what they've learned and how it can be applied to them um, as team leaders on their team. Um, and that's just an easy way that I've been able to keep in touch with them and keep this kind of at the forefront of their minds because it's one thing to be able to talk about it um, you know, for these three days, it's another thing when you were in the middle of your season and you just won a game or you just lost a game and how can you bring some of those experiences um, back to the forefront and how can you learn, how can you use what you learn rather um, to your benefit and to your team's benefit to be successful. Well, thank you, Lynn. I, and thanks, Mike. I, I would just add, Lynn, that it's so good that you as an administrator, particularly those that are with your job and responsibilities as um, in leadership development for the student athletes to be there so that you have the opportunity to see what they went through and then to follow up with it and to get that encouragement to have and to share that with their coaches. And I thought that was great. You know, one, one, Michaela, one other point I would make personally is there's a great lesson I can speak to off the top of my head at, at Gettysburg uh, on day two on, on Little Round Top. Because the, the unit that had walked and engaged the union on Little Round Top had walked for 22 miles. Then it was late in the afternoon around three o'clock. It was not about 90 degrees with 90% humidity. They had our wool jackets. So you can imagine the condition they were in. And this is where perseverance has really got to, got to come into play, where the leader has got, despite of all the different adversities, the leader has got to inspire through obstacles through adversity and to be persistent to get to wherever they need to get to. That's within a 24 hour period. Obviously you're, you're, you're referring to something a lot longer and later, but uh, this is, you know, persistency and perseverance and leadership through adversity is one of the, one of the things we talk a lot about from what we've experienced at Gettysburg. Um, uh, okay. The next question. And, and again, please uh, send your questions. We'd love to hear from you. The next question and I'm going to pass this off to Dennis uh, from Academy Leaderships if they're sponsoring the program overall. But Dennis, can you talk about the costs associated for uh, a school to participate in this program? Dennis. Dennis, I'm not sure you're. Uh, yeah. okay. I just realized. I just realized I have to unmute. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the leadership development investment for a participant is $1,450 with a minimum of 20 participants. Now, it can be a group from a collegiate of collegiate leaders from a particular conference, or it can be from one university or college. We do recommend that coaches, as, as uh, General Caslin said, and leader development people also attend. Okay. Now, the price does not include travel to Gettysburg. Okay, because people are coming from all different areas. So, but it does include the lodging, the meals, the executive bus, the workshops, the training materials, and a workbook. So, once you get there, it includes everything. So, there, there really is no expense once you get there other than the travel to get there. And we do know that universities presently have funding constraints, but this could be an opportunity for uh, a, a good opportunity to approach a donor interested in leadership development for. Uh, leaders in that particular organization, not only uh, could the could the leader, you know, uh, fund a, a group coming to Gettysburg, but also the donor could participate in the program, which is 
would be very memorable. And it's a program that participants and the donors will never forget. I mean, that's, and we know that from experience, having been doing Gettysburg Leadership Experience since 2005, that the people that, are, that went back then still talk about it, okay? It's such an impactful uh, program that they'll never forget about it. And a donor going with a, a group of leaders from their, organi their organization, their uh, college or university would certainly be a topic of conversation and discussion for many years to come. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. Let me just kind of piggyback on that if I could for a second. Um, the idea of having a donor be involved in this, I think, is, is a great idea. And of course, you know who your donors are, and I think you would have to present this to your donors. Um, but if a donor saw that they would not only invest in an athletic program or they would invest in, in a building a fixed structure, this is investing into the future of a young man or woman's life. Not only their skills as a student athlete, but their life skills even after they graduate. And, and in my opinion, there's nothing, nothing more important than investing into our future leaders of our communities. And this is an opportunity to do this. So I think it would be great, very appealing to a donor. And you can really entice it, for example, by asking, by inviting the donor to attend as well. And so they, they would sponsor a number of your student athletes, and then they would attend as well to participate in this. And totally up to you. I'm not telling you how you would, um, you know, work all of this within your de athletic departments, but uh, these are just great opportunities. Why am I talking about donors as an option? S simply because I'm aware very intimately the impact of COVID over the last couple of academics, athletic seasons, uh, especially not this past year, but the year before where we didn't have anybody in the stands and that entire source of income for most universities and colleges just was not there. So now that budgets are taking a hit as a result of COVID, um, you know, a lot of a lot of times the first programs to go are some of these ancillary programs like like this one here, this leadership development program. We understand that, and that's why we're suggesting some other resource options to be able to fund this. Uh, so, um, anybody else from the panel that want to touch on that particular topic? If not, I'm going to go to the next question from Howard Howard Patterson. Uh, Howard asks, and Dennis, I'll pass this to you, but how many attendees can you host per session? Uh, we, we need a minimum of 20 participants, but we, we could handle as many as 40. Okay, so uh, it, we, we have plenty of facilitators that can participate in the program to make it meaningful for everyone, but uh, we need a minimum of 20 and uh, I would say a maximum of 40 participants in any one particular program. Mm -hmm. I, you know, at West Point, we, we brought the student athletes and then we had a second iteration where we brought the non-athletes, the cadet leadership. And that was a group of about a, about a hundred. <laughs> so they were not, as they toured the battlefield, they, did, they were not all together in a hundred, they were broken down into smaller groups with each one had their own facilitator. When we brought them together in the evening to talk about some of these things, we had a large session, breakout sessions and that sort of thing. So I guess I would respond to uh, as many as you really feel that you would like to send to Gettysburg, we would love to do that. We'll find a way to be able to accommodate them. And if we reach a point where we can't, we'll let you know. But uh, my, from my experience working with our cadets at West Point, we've had over a hundred. Uh, that were on the battlefield at any particular time. Uh, hey, Bob, Bob, let, let me yes, let sir. me add a, a little. You're right, and in fact, uh, even in our business uh, Gettysburg program, we have done as many as 80 participants at one time. From in fact, it was the Small Business Administration of all, all but it, it, we we made it work. Uh, you know, we used two executive buses because you can't obviously you can't fit them all on one. But yeah, if, if you have the, whatever number you have, we'll make it work, right, Bob? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Doug, you have an excellent question. I'll open this up to anybody on the panel, particularly those that were with us last summer. Um, within the take home of life lessons promoting positive mindset and relationship bonding, does the program offer the tools to manage potential controversy, dissension, and the potential pitfalls of being a leader? Leadership at times is not glossy all the time. 
Thank you. And I think those of us that have been in leadership, whenever you stick your head above the crowd, you can expect to someone to throw a tomato at you. And uh, it's not glossy at all, and it gets pretty ugly uh, very quickly sometimes. So you're exactly right. As we talk about lessons of the be learned, we need to talk about lessons of uh, uh, controversy, dissension, and pitfalls. And anybody else that would like to comment on that? Jen. Um, it, it just briefly listening, I spent a lot of time um, just listening to the dialogue between the student athletes that were participants in the program. And um, I think they spoke a lot about that, you know, as they tried to relate to their own experiences as leaders on their teams um, and, you know, varying uh, challenges that they experience um, across their sports, um, a lot of times based on um, success of, of the, the competitive success that they've experienced um, versus teams that might not have had recent competitive success and the challenges of being a leader of a team that um, has, has struggled in that manner. And the student athletes really engaged with each other on this idea of, of the, um, the pitfalls of, of being leaders and, um, and the challenges, not only of, of, of um, you know, working with the, their own teams, but how to serve as the communicator with coaches in a very challenging um, environment. And, and, the, um, and, and quite frankly, um, you know, some, of the, some of the mistakes they'd made um, and then some of the successes. And so I, I think this question specifically, um, you know, I know it's addressed within the programming, but it really, to me, was where the student athletes engaged with each other um, a lot as they were walking across the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, and I would just add as facilitators, our responsibility is to bring them through these type of challenges. You know, just off the top of my head, there is one specific example on day two up at Little Grand Top with Joshua Chamberlain. He had to deal with a mutiny. So we do talk about, you know, here he is as a leader, and he's got a mutiny within, within a force that he had en ended up inheriting. And how do you deal with that? So that's a great example of leadership through adversity and, and challenges and dissension, controversy, and then how did he deal with it? And then we trans transfer that into how do how would we deal with it with the conditions that we would deal with on our team um, all right another question and I, we are down to the last uh, seven minutes as i see here and so we welcome some more questions and please send them the next one's a good one dennis and uh, i'm going to pass this one to you but is there a web page or a link with all the information about the program that we can pass to our participants uh, yes, there, there is a, uh, a link that will show the uh, brochure that, that gives a description of the program, uh, and uh, we can get that to uh, our uh, people that participated in the, in the webinar today. I'll work with Tara and uh, 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 Dana in order to make that happen, okay? So we will send out a link to that particular page so that you can access it uh, and be able to see uh, what the program's all about. And it'll actually give you the details about the program. Yeah. So just to be clear, if you were a participant and we have that information, we will send you um, the brochure with the link in the brochure uh, as a follow on to this uh, webinar that we're doing right now. <clears throat> all right, great, good. Um, another, any other questions? Any other questions? All right, any, okay, so we're close to wrapping it up. So let me pass it off to anybody in the panel if any comments that uh, anybody from the panel would like to share as we uh, close it up. Jen, I'll start with you if you have something, and then Mike can- Very, very quick. I was just gonna say, it was fun. I mean, it was a really fun couple of days. So valuable from a leadership lesson standpoint, but also just really fun. Yeah, and you know, I'm going back to Stacy Miller's opening question. Don't be overwhelmed and think that this is a. You, you, if you don't go to the Naval Academy or or West Point, that you, it's not going to be impactful. It's probably, I would argue, more impactful if you don't have the day-to-day -day academy life. So, well, well worth it. Very impactful. Yeah, 
Okay. Anything? Any other comments from anybody? All right. Well, I would. I would like to thank. I would like to thank everyone for participating today. I especially. Eileen and uh, Jennifer, who were actually participated in the program, and uh, Mickey and Mike for participating in this in this uh, webinar, and most importantly, uh, General Caslin for his help in developing and you know de de delivering this powerful program at Gettysburg. So thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I just got a note here that uh, Aaron Yingley from Academy Leadership has posted the link to the chat and the link to the brochure download and we'll be sure to send it to you as well. Well, let me just uh, thank you, Dennis, for letting me to wrap it up uh, for you. But on behalf of Academy Leadership, let me just say that I have fallen in love with this program, not because of the historical nature, which is incredibly impactful in itself, but just to be with the students and the student athletes as they talk about leadership and they try to see how that leadership applies to them. Um, I am absolutely convinced that one of the most essential elements to success on any athletic field is peer leadership. Coaches uh, provide great leadership, uh, you know, the stadium, the fans, the overall culture, but that peer leadership of the leaders within that program are the ones that really make a difference, that really hold each other accountable. And those universities that have programs and athletic departments that have programs that are really dedicated towards leadership development, I salute what you're doing. And I really applaud what you're doing. To me, it ought to be a top priority, not a bottom priority, a top priority program that's got that's essential within, within that program. What we're offering you today is a leadership development opportunity, a very unique leadership development opportunity. But I guarantee you, it'll be worth every penny of your investment as you invest in the lives of those student athletes. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we'll give you a couple of minutes back and uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully uh, on the Gettysburg uh, Leadership Experience. Uh, on behalf of Academy Leadership and on behalf of this great panel, and again, let me tell the panel, thank you so much for taking your time. You are busy people. Thank you so much for taking your time to be with us and with Academy Leadership today. So with that, I'll turn it back over to uh, NACTA so that they can uh, do whatever they do to wrap it up. Thank you all very much. Thank you everyone for joining today. We will send a recording to today's session in the NACTA Daily Review. Have a good day. All right, thanks. Thanks everybody. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you all.